Hey everybody, Matthew of Mr. Domestic here at the Fat Quarter Shop Studio to teach you some next level fabric weaving. This one is a continuation of the series that I've done here and it is called a triaxial weave. The specific pattern is a tumbling blocks weave. It looks like a tumbling blocks, like Hubert-esque whenever you see it. So I've chosen these three pure solids. Look, Those all three look really good together. And the first thing that we need to do is prepare the strips. So these are gonna be one inch strips once they're folded. It's a different technique than the other videos. Turn it here, right here. And these are fat quarters. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them on. I'm gonna do it properly, folks. Okay, now I'm gonna cut. Trim this. Right here. And look at me. Now I'm gonna turn it to do it properly. Look. Ta-da. So since I want it to be one inch folded over, I'm gonna cut two inch strips. So let me line it up to the grid underneath. Boom. Look at this flawless cutting technique, folks. <laughs> so I'm cutting two inch strips all the way across. And then you got some leftovers. You can use this to tie presents. Don't toss it, folks. There's a reason to keep this. You can use it for so many things. So now we've got all these. No reason to do that. Just did it for fun. So now we're going to prepare the strips. They're gonna be prepared similarly to creating bias tape, except these strips are cut on the grain. So I'm gonna fold them over like boom, da boom, like that. So I go like this, like this. And I will start on the end. And once you get started, see with my hands, I'm getting nowhere near the iron, folks, so I'm not gonna burn myself. If you're concerned about that, you can use thermal thimbles, sold at the Fat Quarter Shop. Like that. So that's how you prepare the strips. And the visible part is going to be this. No one will see this or no. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare all of these and then we'll get into the weaving. So now that I have prepared all of the strips in the three different colors, I'm going to create the grid that we're going to do the triaxial weave on. And this is a design board by Lori Holt. So this is where you would use your quilting stuff and then boom, boom, shake the room, look at that. Now I'm gonna make a 10 by 10 inch square. That's fat quarter friendly. How big is this? 18, 18, four. So I'm gonna go start out. Okay, and so these are thicker strips. So I don't need to do every inch, but I'm essentially going to create a guideline for you to follow. It doesn't have to butt up against the lines, but it'll help you see whether things are symmetrical. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a center line. Here, so you know where the center is. Three, four. And then I'm gonna go two inches like this. On either side of this. Like that. So the vertical lines are done. Now you need to do a 30 degree angle line going this way and this way. So I'm putting this line, there's a 30, 60 degree angle line here. Lining it up there. This right here. And then now with this one, I'm going to go two inches on either side. Go. 
go. And since geometry is a thing, I don't even have to measure the other one. I can just find the points right there to create the other line. Boom, look at that. That's one good looking grid right there. So it doesn't matter which order you go in, but if you want it to look like the sun is beaming down on the blocks, then you'll go from dark to light, light being on top. So I'm gonna start with, ooh la la, this color. Got my pins. If I've measured this correctly, I can cut these in half, which I can. Like this. And this is your first fabric weaving video. This is how I pen. I just poke it through to where you can hear it. And I turn it on the diagonal, like that. And then I'll pull the strip a little bit beyond its natural state, just like that. Because of that diagonal, it's not gonna shift. It's not going anywhere. Then keep adding the strips here. You just want the strips to extend about a half inch beyond. So you have some wiggle room with your weave. And with fabric weaving, it's more important for the strips to butt up against each other than for it to fall exactly on the line. Just use these like from here. I can see that it's, it's vertical, so it's going the right direction. And that's all that those lines are for. These fabrics are new colors from Art Gallery Fabrics Pure Solids. Okay, so this is what we in the fabric weaving community called the first layer. So this is the very first, you just put it down all vertical, make sure it's good to go. The second layer, there's a pattern to it that you need to follow. And I'm gonna draw on here, always good to do this. One, two, three. So I'm gonna go in a pattern that it starts over again. One, two, three. But before we add this, what I'm going to do is shimmy this fusible interfacing. Ooh, the billow. I like woven fusible just because it gives it more of a natural feel for something that you're gonna use as a pillow. Right here, and I'm cutting this 10 inches wide so that it fits underneath it. You can alternatively put this on there first. I just forgot to do that. <laughs> so now I'm gonna put it in there. <laughs> Ta-da! So I'm gonna work it in here. This is a teachable moment, folks. <laughs> Put it in here. And you wanna make sure if you've never used interfacing before, make sure that the textured side is up because you don't wanna fuse it to the board. I'll take the pen and I'm gonna use the same technique of pinning on the corner to pull it like that. There we go. Beautiful. Like that, boom. Now I'll flatten this out. So now back to the second layer. This is the medium value one. And these I do not cut before. When I'm weaving the second and third layers, I leave them whatever the length is and I trim as I go. And this is where you need to bring the, the wefty needle into it. Threading the wefty. Here, the wefty needs to be up, the logo. On the other side, it has the one inch mark. And to thread it, you take that. Woo! To thread it, you go like this, stick it there, boom, see? 
like that. Then I'm going to go like that. So as I said, one, two, three, one, two, three. The first one, you're going to go over one, under two. Over one, under two. And this is the, the basic pattern for the entire second layer. It just starts at a different spot as you move up. So it's over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, like that. This is where you'll use that diagonal to line it up. And then Okay. Once again, just pull it a little bit further than its natural state to keep it in place. So that's number one. Keep these on the side because you'll use them for the corners. The next is right here. So this one started with over one. So the next one you're going to start with under one. Under one, over one. Under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, over one. So it's just a different starting place. And then shimmy it, shimmy, 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 like that. And then just check to make sure that it is all lined up. Okay, and then the next one, where do y'all think it's gonna start? Put it in the comments. No, I'll just tell you. <laughs> so you're gonna go under two, over one, right? Different starting. Under two, over one. Under two, over one. Under two, like that. And how you can tell that this is correct as the, the second layer starts to unfold, you'll see an alignment of diamonds forming, as you can see in here. If you don't see the diamonds like this, then you're not doing it right. Or you're creating your own unique weave. You can call it something. Right here, like this. And then the pattern is going to start over. So, the next one. Sometimes I forget what I'm doing. I know I'm fabric moving right now, but then what I'll do is I'll just count down three. So the next one, one, two, three. Oh, okay, that's where I start. Over one, under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, to that. Like this. And as you can see, you're getting to the top of the square. And I'll show you how to weave those in. Right here. And now this is where you can start to see if the shorter pieces will fit. This one I need to need another longer one. But beyond that, that's when you can start using your littler pieces. So this one, just do it again. Okay, one, two, three. That's where I start. So I'm gonna go under one, over one. Under two, over one, under two, over one, under two, over one. Right here. So this one. Take that. See how I got twisted? It's okay. Don't sweat it. Boom, boom, boom. See? Right here. And this is when I start to share pins. Because sharing is caring, folks. Like this. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. It's like magic unfolding, right? The first time I did this, I was like, so now, let me see if this one fits. Ta-da, see? So I'm not gonna sing the over one, under two song, but if you wanna sing along with me, go ahead.
This is neat, yeah? Let's see, will this one fit? Ta-da! It will. There's no need to do this one because it'll just be under, right? So let's save this for later. Can move on, going filling in the bottom. And we are pretty close to being done with the second layer. So I'm going backwards. So this is where I'm like, I'm gonna start here. So one, two, three, that's what I'm doing. Under two. Does that fit? So since I knew I was gonna start here, that's where I went. One, two, three. I knew that that's what it was gonna be. Same situation here, it's gonna go under. So we are done with the second layer. Yeah, take a picture of that and put it on Instagram, folks. So now we are going to start weaving the third layer. And this is the layer that's going to blow your mind, folks. Because you're going to create magic, fabric magic. And you'll need a ruler. There are a couple ways that I show this next one. If you see the backward Z, boom, boom, boom. Not everyone sees it though. Let me get this washi tape. Color coordination, folks. Ta da! So, right here. This is the shape that you are going to weave under. See it? Like that. It's a backward Z. But even doing that, some people don't see it. So I'm going to show you the other way. You'll find the other 30 degree angle. Line it up here. And this will help you find the rest. So it's going to go under these and it's going to go over the two adjoining solids that are going vertical. Then under these, out there. So in, out, in, out. Let me get into it so that it makes some sense, hopefully more sense for those of you who are like, what's he talking about? This one I'm going to do it differently and I'm gonna use both of the wefties. The wefty is now going to go upside down. So the one is going to be on the top. And then I use this half inch one to help get it through. Move this ruler out of the way. So this is the beginning, right? Those are two verticals. Right here, move these out of the way. Two verticals, and then I'm gonna go in there. All right, so you go in one of them, then you're gonna go out the other. If you just stick this one in there, it just slides right through. So now, in, out, see? In, Out. See it? Remove this. Don't wanna, don't wanna like take away from the fabric magic happening. What? Pull it here. Share that pen. Snip. Right here. And then I'll pin this one. And this is another thing that I've seen people, because I get all the time people sending me photos, what did I do wrong? A lot of times, just intuitively, people will want to skip the next one. And they'll go right into this one because it's easier to see the bees. But one thing that I do that's a tip, I'll put one down here, see? Then I'll put another one here, just so that I can see where I need to weave. And now I see that I need to weave in here. And it's going to enter, exit, enter, exit. So let's get into it. Once again, upside down, the one needs to be facing up. And then that's the beginning of the Z. So I'm moving these pins out of the way. See, enter, exit. Enter, exit, see? Enter, exit. Enter, exit. Look at that, you're starting to 
see the box. Magic. Right here. Let's see if this one, that one's not long enough yet. Grab another one. Upside down one is on top. So this one, where is it? That's where it's going to enter. See, look for that. Now you can definitely start to see the blocks. Share the pen, snip, snip, share the pen. Yeah, this is really cool. And is this one long enough? Look at that, look at that. And then, see those two verticals right there? So I'm gonna remove this pen, get it out of the way. <laughs> Does anyone see the next backwards Z? E? Hmm, right there. Enter, exit. Enter the diagonal. Exit the next diagonal. Now I'm just going to continue to fill it out. <laughs> so yay, now the tumbling blocks weave is complete. Hopefully that blew a couple minds out there, even me. Like I've been doing this for years and every time I do it, it still does that for me. But then the next question is, how do I get it off? How do I get it off? How do I get it off? And there are two ways. The interfacing is, is underneath it. That's going to help. And then tape. Look, color coordinated tape, folks. I got my iron, let me heat that up a little bit. And while that's happening, I'm just gonna tape it off. Right here, and just creating that square here. Ooh. Ooh. Ta da. I love this for securing. Oh, let me do it again. Don't want no messy tape. This is one way. If you totally forgot to put interfacing on it, then this, this should work on its own. But then this is where the iron comes in. Don't use high heat, high steam. Use like a medium heat and just press, 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 press. You just want it to be tacky enough to where it's gonna stay on there before you can totally secure it with high heat, high steam later. So boom, boom, boom. Look at me, I'm pressing right. Duh, duh. So 
So that should be enough. We'll see. Now I'm going to take out the pins. One awesome use for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it on there. See it's not going anywhere. Flip it over. Boom. Ta-da. See? And now this is when you get that heat out and that steam. And then you go to town. I'm pressing, folks. Press. Don't iron. Press. Leave it there for a little bit. You hear that steam coming? That steam's coming. Now steam and heat is what I use, but depending on your interface facing, it might be a little different, so make sure to follow those instructions. Okay, now it's secure, and the final thing to do whoa, whoa, is to take this over to the sewing machine and use this tape as a, a guide for a stitch line just to finalize it and secure it before we can turn it into a pillow. So now the final step in securing this weave is I'm going to use this as a stitch line, just the edge of it. I'm doing it at standard stitch length of 2.5. And just let it go. Catch the edge. thing we have left for securing and finalizing and prepping this for implementation into a pillow is to remove the tape. Check this out. It should tear right on the stitch line and come off. And this, I'm gonna, I'll just leave this on here. It's within the seam allowance, so it's totally cool. And now I have a creative grid, 11 and a half by 11 and a half ruler, but I'm going to cut it to where it's 10 and a half by 10 and a half. So just find the center line, one, two, three, four, five. Right there. I'm going to cut it at 11 and a half and 11 and a half, and then trim off a half inch to get it started. And you want to end up with a 10 and a half by 10 and a half. Now, see, look, oh, it's already there. Creative Grids, good job. Right there. Then cut it, cut it, cut it. Then see, the seam is right there, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And it will all adjust whenever we create the pillow back, which is going to be exactly 10 and a half by 10 and a half. But for now, boom. Boom. So this is a wonderful, awesome technique that you can implement into quilting, to pillows, to bags, anything that you want to. If you want to learn more about it, I have more videos on my channel. You can go to Mr. Domestic on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to me. Make sure to subscribe to Fat Quarter Shop. Thumbs up, all of the above. Yay, fabric weaving is awesome. Thank you, bye.